So last spring, I was going through a semester that had me writing a paper pretty much every other day, and it was awful. One day though, I checked YouTube and saw a trailer for a brand new game, Codename X, a Persona 5 mobile game. The trailer was pretty intriguing, with a very mysterious and yet clearly Persona vibe to it, with the graphics, characters, and of course, the music. And though I generally hate mobile games, except Project Sakai, I was cautiously interested. I went back to writing papers for days on end, expecting to see more in the future at some point. After that day though, nothing. Seriously, I forgot about this game until the other day when, for pretty much no reason, it just came into my head. I remembered it and I was like, wait, what? And went to Google it, like, right away. I'm sure many of you also completely forgot you saw this, or maybe you've never even heard of it, and now you might be wondering, well, is there any news about it? I mean, you'd assume with the anniversary going on, something would be said about it. And especially with the anniversary being on a roll with disappointing announcements, at least before the console ports, you'd think they would have brought up a mobile game to further piss everyone off in typical style. But things are never really so simple. Despite all the headlines that I'm sure many of us read and accepted, Codename X's legitimacy was actually pretty questionable. Underneath the headlines calling it Persona was quite a lot of mystery. So let's find out just what is going on with Codename X. Now if you haven't seen or can't remember the trailer, then let's quickly go over it. This was part of a larger stream full of announcements by Perfect World Games, a game developer with a history of MMO and mobile games. They described it as a mobile version of a very popular JRPG series with over 10 million sales, but didn't elaborate on which specifically, instead deciding to keep it a secret. The teaser trailer starts with some characters that I obviously can't read. From there though, you see Tokyo in a bright and colorful style that looks a lot like P5. The music has that similar P5 flair to it, cool and jazzy. You see a man watching from a roof in Shibuya, calling presumably the woman. You then see the woman as she types rigorously on a computer, attempting to hack into it. The music changes to be more tense, sounding a lot like the opening heist of P5. From there though, things take a turn for the worse, and the man begins to make a run for it. We see more of Shibuya, before the hack is shown to be completed, and the trailer ends with the title, Codename X. It's worth mentioning here that the thumbnail shows the girl in a different outfit, what looks like a Phantom Thief outfit, drawn in a style that's really reminiscent of the original P5 character art, with the very similar shading and whatnot. On first glance, it all checks out, and looks pretty good. From there though, people began to heavily dissect the trailer, as most people online tend to do. They notice that at exactly 48 seconds in, you can briefly see a glimpse of Untouchable, a wise shop from Persona 5, with the camo out front and a very, very tiny glimpse of the green lettering during a couple frames. Some binary code shown during the trailer also translates to Persona 5X. The website also had some extra information, with bios for the two characters. According to translations by Inverse and Game Central, the girl's name is Rukawa Yuki, and it states that she has a very strong sense of justice, willing to uphold it no matter the cost. One picture shows her in what looks like a Kosei High uniform, the same school that Yusuke and Hifumi go to. The male's name is kept secret, and a lot of people online assume that it's probably the playable character. The articles describe him as your average high schooler with a dark past, much like Joker. What's really interesting about his bio though, is that according to Persona Central's translation, it makes a reference to palaces created from twisted desires, furthering the Persona 5 connection. People even dug into the actual website's code itself, and found that the file names for a lot of it even had P5 in the name. So, case closed, right? They had kept the IP a secret, but we figured it out. Easy peasy. Well, not really. While a lot of the visuals check out, at the same time certain things are incorrect. Big Bang Burger is changed to just a generic burger shop, and the Shibuya 109 building is showing correctly, which is weird as it's been changed to Shibuya 705 in the games. These are just kind of nitpicks though, there's much bigger issues. You see, Perfect World Games is a Chinese games developer, and while there's plenty of highly legitimate Chinese devs, there's also a ton who just rip off and profit off whatever IPs they can. Like Persona Central had this one Persona ripoff link that was actually pretty funny to see. 
Like, if you look at it, that's totally supposed to be Mitsuru and Akihiko in their arena outfits. You even got Discount On on the top, too. It, it's clear what they're going for. Now, although Perfect World Games is a Chinese dev, they do actually have a history of legal, licensed games, such as one for Final Fantasy, Million Arthur, and one for One Punch that's still in development. They also brought over CSGO and Dota 2 to China, so they have a positive record from what I can see on articles online. So, case closes again, right? They licensed it from Atlas, and that explains everything. Well, again, not really. Things get a bit weird from here. You see, Atlas pretty much made no acknowledgement of the announcement in the days following it. And to this day, I haven't found anything from Atlas recognizing it as legitimate. To some extent, this could make sense. The game was only confirmed for China, so no point in acknowledging something that as far as we know, wasn't going to come to Japan or the West. This still made some people skeptical though, and I can understand that. But all the clear Persona inspiration and other evidence from the website pointed to it being legit. And a reliable insider Daniel Ahmad, or X on Twitter, confirmed himself that they licensed it from Atlas. And I mean, come on guys, it's Zhuge Liang, that's my boy. That's literally like my main in every Dynasty Warriors game. Who wouldn't trust him? Perfect World Games' next moves though, brought all of that into question, however. In the following days, they removed references to P5 and the file names of much of the website. While they clearly went into the game's announcement being secretive on the IP, this still just came off as a really odd move. Eventually, though, the game's website as a whole was taken down, and from there on, radio silence. And I really mean that. When you Google Codename X, all of the top results are around from the same time when it first got announced. Literally nothing past that ever comes up, essentially. Searching on Twitter, Reddit, or even on some of the bigger Persona discords, you just have a couple people asking about it every couple of months with no reply or new info. All we're left with is our wonder. Just what was Codename X? Was it real? Was it a ripoff? Nobody really knows. While Daniel Ahmad is certainly reliable, not everyone is right 100% of the time. Do you take him at his word? Or do you examine everything else surrounding it? Really, it comes down to your own interpretation. For what it's worth, other games from the same announcement stream as Codename X have seen updates in progress, such as the One Punch game that I mentioned earlier. Sure, maybe it could just be having development troubles, but it still makes you wonder why they'd take down the website. I suppose we'll just have to wait and see what, or if, anything comes out of this. Still though, if Codename X is fake, or if it's just exclusive to China, then that still begs the question, where is a true, widely available P5 mobile game? Mobile gaming is the largest sector of the wider games industry, accounting for over half of all total revenue generated nowadays. Persona is no stranger to mobile games either, with a long list of intriguing games for plenty of different old Japanese phones. A lot of the old ones actually tied into the main story, with Aegis getting an origin game, Persona 2 getting one that bridged the gap between the two games, and even one set during the Yakushima trip in Persona 3, though of course their canonicity is pretty questionable. Despite there being a ton of them, as far as I'm aware though, there's been none active right now in Japan for modern phones, and certainly none over here in the West. Persona is constantly collabing with other gacha mobile games to I'm sure plenty of monetary success. So why haven't they fully cashed in on its popularity? Fire Emblem Heroes is incredibly successful too, and you'd think Atlas or Sega would want to replicate that same success with their own popular JRPG franchise, especially since the overlap between Fire Emblem and Persona fans is pretty big from what I can see. It was honestly one of the 25th anniversary announcements I expected most, and going into the future, it's honestly something that I still 100% expect to happen. I mean, they'd be stupid not to, and what kind of company would be so oblivious as to not cash in on a chance for free money. Yeah. Now that I really think about it, this is Atlas we're talking about. They took years to finally realize people actually wanted to play other Persona games besides 5 on recent consoles. Not to mention they took forever to realize that people who played Strikers would probably also want to play the original game. So yeah, never mind, we'll probably just keep getting gotcha collabs. And I mean, I guess that's okay, but come on Sega and Atlas. Project Sakai collab win. But yeah, that's all for today. What do you think of Codename X? 
Do you think we'll end up seeing it or some other P5 mobile game? Let me know in the comments. And subscribe, of course. This is Heavenly M. Adios.